Hey guys. Uh, so today we are actually going to look into a problem uh, that I, uh, I know, saw on Codality. Uh, so let's let's quickly uh, go through this problem and then I will I know, try to solve it uh, in Visual Studio. OK, so this problem is called as so I have submitted the solution in uh, in Codality and I was you know, able to get 100 percent. So I'll, I'll probably just see the same solution that I've you know, uh, coded beforehand. So the problem says uh, it's called binary gap and find what we have to do is find the longest sequence of zeros in the binary representation of an integer. OK, uh, so let's quickly understand what it is talking about. Right, so let's say uh, we have a number nine. OK, so nine has a binary representation of one double zero one. Now what we have to do is we have to find the longest sequence of zeros uh, within uh, ones in the sequence, right? So in this case it is two, right? This is the longest sequence of zeros. Now let's say the binary representation of let's say another number is this. For this also the longest sequence of zeros is two. And now let's take another example. If, if it's for example this, then in this case the answer should be three, right? OK, so let's see. How we can solve this, right? Uh, so the first thing what we have to uh, do is we have to take the number as an input from the user, right? So what we can do is we can do a simple console write line. Enter the number. In order to take the number, uh, input the number, I uh, will use console dot read line. Int number equals to this and then I have to convert this right convert dot to in 32. OK, so we have our number that we have taken input from the uh, user. Now see the first task for us is to convert this number. This is an integer uh, and let's say the integer that the user has entered is nine. So what we have to do is we have to first convert this integer into the, its binary representation. OK, so now if you have, if you understand binary, uh, I know uh, I mean, how do we convert integer to binary? We could either like uh, uh, keep on dividing by two, right? And then take the modulus and build that particular uh, sequence. Or in C sharp, there's an easier way to do it as well. Uh, so what I can do is I can say string. Binary representation equals to what I can do is convert dot to string. The number and then followed by. There's an overload which says what what is the two base? OK, so in this case we have to convert it to binary, which is base two. Uh, so this should give us the binary representation of this this particular number that we are passing. OK, so let's quickly run this at least see if we are able to get the binary representation or not. Let's say if I enter nine, you know, see this. Yeah, so we got the binary representation of nine. All right, so I think first step is done now. Now if we see this example only, right, the one that we took, so there there would be, I know, definitely once we go through uh, all of the items inside this representation, uh, there would be, I know, multiple uh, uh, gaps. Uh, correct and we have to find the maximum one. So in this case it is two and it is three and the maximum one is three. Right? So let's let's create a variable. Let's call it as uh, max. Call it as max gap and I'll give it an initial value of zero. So now one thing we have to do for sure is we have to loop through all of the elements of this binary representation. So I can say I equals to zero. I is less than. Uh, so for example, in this particular case, if it is one zero zero one, we have to loop through the uh, the characters in this string uh, four times, right? So it's 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 actually binary rep dot length, right? From zero less than the binary length is what we have to traverse through the element. 
the stream, okay? All right, so this is our initial loop. Now let's say for the first element, if we are trying to see if you know, it's a valid uh, element to calculate the gap, what I'll first I'll do is I'll just create a variable current. It's, I'll call it as current gap. This would store the current, the, the current sequence that we are progressing. For example, if we are evaluating this, uh, the current gap would store the value two. This is the problem. Okay, now let's put a condition. Let's say if binary rep of I equals it's a string representation it would be a character right so we have to use uh, single quotes if it is one basically that that is marking the start of the uh, the the sequence right the substring that we are, we are looking for correct okay so now what we have to do is see for example if, if the first element or or whatever the element that we are starting from it is one then we have to keep on going Till we encounter another one, correct? And we have to keep on increasing the current max. So that is what I'll do here. What I'll do is I'll uh, so I'll tell you like why I'm creating another variable. So let's say I'll create a variable in j equals to i plus one because I I don't want to increment i i i is al already part of this loop. So I just need another variable to use in my uh, the other loop that I'm just going to create. Right? So I'll say while binary rep of j till this is not equals to one. Correct. Two is you increment current gap. Right? So current gap plus plus and also increment j plus plus. OK, straightforward. Uh, now. Once I come outside the while loop. I have to put another condition. So if current gap is greater than max gap, right, which is the uh, the global variable which is storing the uh, or the the I don't know the largest the maximum gap till this point if if current gap is greater than max gap, in that case, I just want to store max gap equals to current gap. OK. So this is fine. So this is where I started with, right? Then I ran the, the program and then there were like, I uh, know some edge cases that I had to handle, but let's quickly see if it if this is able to. Uh, Let's say if I give nine. Index oh, OK, so I'm getting an exception. Uh, J is less than. Da, da, da. OK, yeah. OK, so this is one of the edge cases that I was not handling, uh, right? So what it is saying is it's it's actually because I'm uh, incrementing J and if it goes to the till the very end, it is actually trying to access an element in this particular string array uh, which for which the index is not there, right? So we have to put in a condition here saying that J has to be less than binary rep dot length. And actually the same condition has to be available here as well. Right, so in this case also J has to be less than binary rep dot length. OK, and finally see because when we start from. So start from here, so I so this is this is the position of I and this is the initial position of J, right? And I'm keep on incrementing J. So at the end of this while loop, actually I have to set some value of I and in this case I would be equals to J minus one. Uh, it would be J minus one because this loop is going to run till it's it comes to this right now. The problem is when it when it's here and now it comes outside this loop. 
if it runs this for loop again, it is going to increment I plus plus, right? So it's it's actually going to start from this zero, which we don't want. We actually want it to start from this one uh, because if it starts from zero, then this condition would fail, right? We are assuming that the first element of a sequence of the substring should be a one, right? So that's that's the reason I'm doing an I equals to J minus one here, okay? So I think now it is, is looking okay so let's quickly run this so let's say nine Ooh. okay so there seems to be some problem okay i equals to j minus one so let's let's just put the breakpoint here and see uh what's What's happening? Okay. So binary representation of nine. This looks OK. Max gap is zero. So I equals to zero. I is less than binary rep dot length and we have I plus plus. So current gap is zero. If binary rep of one equals to equals to one. Sorry, I is it's OK. And we create a new variable J. And j equals to i plus one uh, and then we have a condition okay okay so i i understood like what's the issue it's it's actually this in an add operator right it's so actually the left hand side is evaluated first so we have to make sure that we try to access from j only if j is less than length right so we want this this statement to be executed first and then only this should be evaluated right because this is uh, throwing the index out of range exception i think this was the issue so let's say nine okay now it did run and max gap is zero so max gap shouldn't be zero now max gap let's do, do, do. why is this zero Let's quickly come here. Do, 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 no, Current gap is three. No, 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 no. So current. Let's just go back, right? Okay, so let's see what's happening. So for the first time when it runs, it sees that OK for the first uh, index, it's one. So J becomes I plus one. J is less than length and J is while this J is not equals. OK, 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 OK. See an issue here. This this actually is a character, right? Uh, so this has to be in single quotes. All right. Yeah, because this is a string we are trying to access a character at a particular place, uh, so we have to compare it with the character, right? Not like one, uh, which is an integer. So nine again. Now it's coming as two. OK, so this is this seems to be working. Let's just check a few other things. Uh, so let's say 529. It has two gaps of like four and three, so the answer should be four. So let's try to run this for 529. Just run this again. 520. OK, so it ra did run and max gap is four. Right, so you got an idea. Uh, so let's say I'll just run it for like one more sample. Let's say Let's run it for eight. Eight is like one zero zero zero, right? Uh, so it should be it, it should actually give us zero. Right? Because there's there's no one at the end of uh, any of the subsequence. OK, uh, so this was the. Uh, let's quickly go back to Codility. So this was the binary gap uh, problem, uh, right? So what I will just quickly see what we did here so we just took the number as an input from the user uh, okay converted it into a binary representation using uh, convert.toString. 
then we just loop through all of the uh, characters in the string representation. And if the character is one, actually, you know, we just loop through till we encounter another one. And then we were holding uh, the current cap value in a variable. And then in the end, we were checking if this current gap is greater than max cap, then we were overriding the value of max cap. Okay? And then we uh, also saw like there are like some edge cases that we have to handle using this uh, this uh, check and also this this check should be uh, the first check that we should be doing if we are accessing something using this uh, J variable. Right. Uh, so that's all I wanted to cover for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.